Hello and welcome to part two of my X-Lights tutorial series. In this tutorial I'll be covering the lighting network uh, setup, uh, how to set up your hardware uh, like your USB device such as a DMX or LOR controller or a E131 device and also how to test those lights after they're set up if you have them connected into your computer. In the description of this video, you'll find a direct link for the x -Lite software. You'll also find a link to download a sample show, which I'll be using for these tutorials. Uh, that way you can follow along with those if you wish. I also have a few links to my personal display, so you can see what x -Lites can really do in action. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, if you are following along in our tutorial series, we have just already gone over setting your show directory. So now that your show directory is set, you're going to want to go ahead and start setting up the lighting network. Under the setup tab here, under lighting networks, we have a few different options, save, USB, E131, null, change, delete, delete all. So what we're going to do first, uh, I'll show you the add USB device. So if we have a DMX or a Pixelnet, LOR, D-Lite, Renard, you can configure all those USB dongles here. Um, let's start with DMX. Let's say we have a DMX controller connected. You would go ahead and select what port that's connected to if it is connected at this moment. Um, in this case, I don't have any DMX devices. So I'm going to go ahead and leave not connected at this point. Um, you can also come back here later and configure the port once you do have everything uh, running to your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and just say we've got 512 channels of DMX right there. And click OK. So now we have our first network uh, set up here. Our DMX device uh, has 512 channels. And let's say we have two of those. We can go ahead and add another one. Um, again, DMX, last channel, select its port, click OK. Um, or let's say it's an LOR controller. We can go to LOR, again, assign the port if it's available at this point. If not, come back later and, and make sure you, you, you'll have to have the port assigned before you can actually test or view the lights in live mode um, as you're sequencing. Or for testing purposes, it also needs to be configured. But if you don't want to actually see the lights but if you actually don't want to have the lights plugged in at this point and just want to sequence, you can just skip the port altogether right now and, and come back to it. Um, for LOR, let's say we have a 16-channel uh, controller. I'm just going to click OK there. So now we have our DMX and our LOR controllers all configured in. Um, and you can keep adding as many as you need to. For my display and for purposes of this tutorial, I happen to only use E131 devices. I use the AlphaPix controllers from Holiday Coro. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, if you have DMX or LOR, keep those in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete these because they don't apply uh, to my display or for what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. So now let's go ahead and add a E131 network controller. In my case, like I had mentioned, I use the AlphaPix controllers. They each have 16 outputs and I'm going to go ahead and set one of those up here now. So in my case, you can, you can choose between multicast and unicast. I like to go unicast. That's just my preference. That's how I've been able to get it work, working the best. So each of my controllers has its own static IP address. I'm going to go ahead and start with my first one here, which is 192.168.051. And that universe starts, uh, DMX universe is 1. And since it's a 16-channel controller, my preference is I use one DMX universe per output on the controller. Um, so there's 16 outputs, 16 universes. Um, if you did only have a one-output controller and... Yeah, you had multiple universes on that one output. You could check one output here, um, and that will consolidate it all into one item for you on the lighting network list. In my case, I like them separated, 
so I can see everything. Um, and then how many channels do you have on each universe, the last channel on each universe. Um, in my case, each universe is a little different. I like to leave this defaulted at 512 because having the extra universes out there, or the extra channels, it doesn't affect the outcome of the software. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll see it pre-fills in my 16 universes, 1 through 16, all on the same port, 192, 168, 051, and all the different channels. So I have a total of 8,192 channels, potentially with this one controller. Now if I had to come back in here after the fact and change things, you sure can. You just go into each item, click change, and you can change the IP address, the universe, and how many channels they each have. So you can go back and modify down the road if you need to. One other item to be aware of here too is the add null option. So let's say, let's say we don't have, I'm going to delete all of these. And let's say we don't have anything, we don't have any controllers hooked up yet. We just want to start playing around with X lights, sequencing, and find out what, you know, what we can do with this piece of software. So in that case, the easiest thing to do would be just to add null. And this is just a simple null output. Um, you type in how many channels you want. Let's say I want 10,000 channels. Click OK. All done. So now... We have just a, a null network, doesn't do anything, it just maps the channels to X lights so that way we can continue along. So this is a good option to choose um, if you just want to play around with the software and don't want to go through all the setup part yet. Again, what you need to do, you need to have your lighting network set up before you can actually sequence any songs. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to remove this again. I'm going to fast forward here and add my entire display, all my E131 controllers. Um, okay, so I've gone ahead and added all my E131 devices now. Um, in this case, I have eight controllers. Um, all of my controllers are configured this way, and now that those are configured, um, the big thing you want to do before moving any further is go ahead and save your setup. So go ahead and save your lighting network setup right here, and that will save it so that way you don't lose it. All right, so now that we have our lighting network set up, whether it be E131 devices, USB devices, LOR controllers, whatever it may be, once you have all that set up, or even the null objects, um, at that point we are ready to either start testing our lights if we wish, or we start putting our layout together and uh, building our models and elements. Um, so just real quick, under the test tab I want to show you quick is where you can actually test the live output to your lights. Um, if they are connected to your computer and your lighting networks on the setup page are all configured properly, you should be able to test out your lights. Um, for simplicity, what we're going to say here is um, you can, every single channel is listed in here. Once you start assigning models and elements to these channels, uh, the names will change from Net14 to whatever it may be, Megatree14. Um, so you can ease a little bit easier to find what you're looking to test in here. So in my case, I use all pixels uh, in my display. Um, so for example, channels 1, 2, and 3 are my pixels uh, one RGB. So I could select all three of these for that first pixel and actually go over to RGB or RGB cycle. You can do a bunch of different testing functions on here. Um, mixed colors, ABC, all nine. You just 
something to play around with and, and it'll help you know that your controller is actually connected properly and set up properly with an X lights. Another easy way to do this that I've found is if I'm just testing one controller at a time, I'll plug it in, I'll just select all, I'll go ahead and go over to the RGB cycle, mixed colors, um, and then lastly, the most important thing is this icon up in the top right that says output to lights. You gotta make sure that's on, otherwise the software will not output to the controllers. So now that that's on, if I hit mix colors, bam, all my lights now are going through a color palette change and I can see that they're all working properly. Um, I can also go over to RGB. I'm just going to do a background color only at turn up all my reds, all my reds work, all my greens, all my greens work, all my blues. So you can play around with this. Um, there's also different ways where you can select specific, if you have to select a specific group of channels, you can save that specific group as whatever you want. Um, let's call this one, say, our arches. So that way, when you come back later, you don't have to scroll down and find them. You can simply click load, and if I want to load, I can load my arches or whatever else I have saved as a test. And it'll auto-select those for you. So that's the testing screen. Um, very basic overview of it. You just got to play around with it to get used to it. Um, make sure, again, that you always click output to lights if that's on if you want to actually see and, and test that your controllers are hooked up properly. So thank you for watching part two of my x -Lights video tutorial series. Please make sure to subscribe to the playlist as I will be adding additional videos as I can, and I hope you enjoyed the video.